Good evening. This video I want to deal with the uh, video put up by Stephen Anderson. Again, we play some theology. Uh, this comes back, comes back basically uh, based on the video I did uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, here he is explaining replacement theology. As I said, the replacement theology wants to, wants to ignore the fact that there's a real physical kingdom coming. It's going to be a Jewish kingdom. And he's going to try to talk, talk out of it now and ignore the fact that the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom, not a physical kingdom. That's why we don't try to set up, set up nations. Once the fig tree is done, it's done. Because what did he say to the fig tree? Let no fruit grow on thee from hence forward forever. And then what do we see in this passage? Miserably destroy those murders. Does it say, and then later, later they come back and they take over the vineyard again? I mean, is that what... Back in the land, 1948. Isaiah 11, 11 says the back in the land twice. Do you see in the story? No. And what about in Luke 13? No, if it doesn't bring forth fruit, cut it down. But then later we're going to fix it. No, it's done. It's over. He said it's taken... It's done, it's over, but the Jews are still existing. ...taken from you. It's given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof. And it, let me tell you something. We as believers, the holy nation made up of all believers in Christ, has replaced the physical nation of Israel as being the chosen people of God. And so to sit there and say, oh, you believe in replacement? The Look, of course it's been replaced when he says the kingdom of God's taken from you and kingdom of God given to a nation bringing forth the fruits. Of People say, well, it wasn't replaced. It's just added on. We've been added on. No, no, no. That's not what it teaches here. He says it's taken from one and given to another. Because there are some that will try to get us all to basically become like Jews. Well, we need to be grafted into the nation of Israel. So that means that we basically need to start, you know, wearing prayer shawls and saying shalom and, you know, and hachlem and bach. Romans 11.25. For I would not, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. The mystery of blindness hardening of Israel. That blindness in part is happened to Israel. Israel can't be church. Okay. This is in part has happened to Israel. This is national Israel, Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Where's the Gentile fullness? Now these guys also deny the, the church as an organism, by, by the way. They also deny the fact the church is part of the body of Christ. And so and so all Israel shall be saved. That's not the church. As is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. That sounds like the church to you. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. Who's the sakes now? The Gentiles. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. They're still beloved. Imagine that. They're still beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You know what a guy gets to this verse? You know what he gets to that, that verse? He says, oh, God loves everybody. <laughs> yeah. When it's specifically to the Jews, the nation of Israel, national Israel, genetic Israel. Our bar mitzvah and whatever else. That's not what the Bible's teaching because what it said in Romans 11 when it talks about us being grafted in, you know, that tree... Okay, represents spiritual Israel, not physical Israel. We don't need to go to physical Israel or join with physical Israelites. We're already the holy nation. It's a spiritual nation in the New Testament. Spiritual nation. That's right. Not a physical nation, but there is going to be a physical nation in the millennium. Testament. Okay. So that's who they we... won't be the church. It'd be Jewish. We are in Christ. We are spiritual Israel. We are uh, the spiritual nation. It's been taken from the physical nation. Just, we, we are we are the body of Christ. We're the church. So, so Peter calls us a, a spiritual we're a, a nation, a priest, a priest nation. But we don't try to set up kingdoms. And,
you say, well, but God's not through with them yet. Oh, really? He cut it down. Oh, yeah. What does it say in Romans uh, 11, 11 there? Until. What does it say there, uh, Anderson? Blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles become in. He's, he's not done with them. Oh, really? It withered away immediately. Look, these are prophecies that he said would happen in the future. Think about it. Because had he been killed yet? No, he's probably he's saying, look, I'm going to be killed because he said the sun comes and he's killed by them. You see, the prophecy in the future is Zechariah 12, 10. All the prophecies these guys have to ignore in the Old Testament. Prophecies of the New Temple. The prophecies of the Davidic Covenant. Prophecies of the Abrahamic covenant, the land branch, they all have to be fulfilled. And what does the Lord do when he finds out that they killed his son? He miserably destroys those murderers. Yeah, those particular murders in first generation got wiped out. Okay, in another place, and I don't have time to turn to all the places, he talks about how he's going to break down their tower and destroy their city. Yeah, he did. And he's going to let it out to other people. Yeah, he did. So... If Jesus is predicting that that tree is going to be cut down, it's going to wither away. They're going to be miserably destroyed. The question is, did that happen? Did yeah, it did happen. But they're still here, aren't they? After the Jews rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, were they cut down? Were they, yeah. they miserably destroyed? Yeah. Was the kingdom of God taken from them? Yeah. Were they wiped out? And the yeah, yeah. Not wiped out. They're still around. Answer is yes. They weren't wiped out because they're still here. As we know that history tells us, you know, we didn't really need a history book because Jesus said it would happen. But history tells us that he also said they'd be back in the land twice, which they are. Seventy A.D. Their city and temple were destroyed. So what? They're back in the land now, aren't they? And most of them were scattered into all nations. And in 135 A.D., so they weren't wiped out then. Most of them scattered in other nations. See what I They weren't wiped out. They were scattered in other nations. They believed in some other false messiah that they thought was going to save them. And, of course, he was a lying false prophet. And Hadrian came in and, and wiped the city out again and put salt on the city. So it would never pop up again. And lo and behold, lo and behold Jerusalem is still, a, still a, a, trembling, a stumbling stone for the Gentiles. It's back. Can't get rid of it. Why is that, Anderson? And they were all scattered once again in 135 A.D., this time for good. So in 70 A.D., 135 A.D., they're, they were scattered into all nations. Yeah, and they're back, aren't they? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now what? The nation, the, the, the city of Jerusalem was, right, was actually torn up and salted by, by Hadrian. Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The Jews coming back. That was a result, my friend, of them rejecting Jesus. Yeah, and that's what the, uh, Acts 2 is about and Romans 10 is about. Wanting Jews of that first century to get away from Judaism. Because God is about to destroy that generation. And so they were separated. They were basically just Christians of one. And uh, Luke 21, to get out of Jerusalem because the, of the coming wrath of the, uh, the, the Romans coming in. Because the wrath, was, the wrath of God was upon them. No one denies that. I mean, is there any doubt in your mind, oh Christian friend? <laughs> Christian friends. Do you have any doubt that the reason why the temple was destroyed and why the Jews were scattered into all nations was a result of them rejecting Jesus? Do you have any doubt about that? Is there no. Any in fact, the response for killing Jesus. It says, uh, Paul says, <laughs> killing the prophets and killing Jesus. So, yeah, we know that. They were there. We, no question about that. Everybody who doubts that and just thinks, oh, that's just a coincidence. So what? <laughs> of course that's why. You know, they're scattered everywhere. Now, if you ask some Jewish rabbi today, hey, why were you guys uh, scattered everywhere? They'll say, oh, well, you know, we just weren't observing the Torah right. Who cares what a Jewish rabbi thinks? He's an unbeliever. That's what they'll tell you. 
Don't you ask a dispensationalist pre-trib rapture with that person. We'll tell you exactly why the Jew is scattered and why he's back. And then, you know, they all came back in 1947, uh, 48. Oh, oh they all came back in 1947, 1948. 421 in. 2,000 years later, people scattered under the wrath of God come back to the same land that were being held by the Turks in 1917. The Turks. And then the British got it back. And then World War II broke out because none of the Jews wanted to go in that land then. They said, we don't want to go to Palestine. We're, we're happy in our own countries. Our nation's here. And what happened? The Holocaust broke out. And they recognized none of the Gentile nations, none of the world, none of the world care about the Jews. They all hate the Jew. So the Jews said, we got to have our own nation to protect ourselves. And they said, that's why they went back into the land. So World War I got the land for them. World War II got the people for the land. Oh, just that, that's not a miracle. Nation. Uh, you want to see two miracles, the Bible and the Jew. Both in existence. You can't destroy either because God won't let them be destroyed. Despite guys like Anderson. Obviously, they came leading up to that. But I asked the rabbis, I said, well, you know, did you guys. Like well, you can't rabbi. He's asking rabbis. That's when he snuck in with the Jew, the, the Jewish rabbis. They had that video and he, he was pretending something and he was lying to him, being deceitful. Like straighten up in 1947? No, they're unbelievers. <laughs> like, that's a shock. You straighten up? Did you guys straighten up in 1948? This, this, this man is so evil. I mean, why? And they're like, well, no, not really. <laughs> because they're, uh, uh, but they're like, but it, but it had nothing to do with us rejecting Jesus. That's not why they're scared. That's not why the temple is. Well, well, why would they think that? They don't know why. There's a mystery of hardening of Israel. They don't know why they're being hardened. Troy, that's not why it happened. Nothing to do with Jesus. We were just being disobedient in other ways. Well, did you guys fix it in 1948? Well, no. No, they got back in the land, though, didn't they? Well, most Jews are still not. They got to be unbelievers to be back in the land when the Lord comes to save them and save Jerusalem. They're unbelievers. Schofield predicted he'd be back in the land in 19, 1913. Well, 1909, his first, uh, first either 19, I think it's 1909, his first uh, his, uh, reference Bible. 1909. And there were pre trip people pre predicting they, were, they had to be back in the land. The Theocratic Kingdom, written by. Uh, Peterson, I think it's Peter Peterson. Uh, he predicted it. They all predicted it. Pre trip people, pre, uh, pre trip dispensational people predicted that the Jews had to be back in the land to fulfill the prophecies. And sure enough, 1948, boom, they're back in the land after 2,000 years of persecution. Following it. That's what even a rabbi will tell you. But listen, I, I've got something really interesting to tell you that you might not have heard. I've, I've never mentioned this in a sermon before, but it's really interesting. When you look at the, the servants, look at verse 38. Now he's going to talk about the servants and the fact that the Orthodox Jews believe that a real physical Messiah is coming and then they have to reform people who they, they think they, they want to rule as a nation. They're going to rule as, as a people. And he gives the parable of you know the uh, the leaders of the Jewish nation who want to kill Jesus because they, don't, you know, they, they, they want to uh, take the inheritance. They want to uh, have the inheritance without the king. They know they want the land without the king. Now, of course, that uh, that was the issue. They they were afraid of Rome coming in, taking their power. They didn't want the Jewish Messiah coming in there because they they had their own power and they wanted they, it was under the authority of Rome. So they want to get rid of rid of Jesus because he was saying he claimed to be king. And so they said, no, we don't want this king. We want to keep our own power. So you think that's amazing? It's not amazing. Point is, is that. King of God is not the king of heaven. I got a bunch of guys come in and say, yes, it is. If you have a Schofield Bible, go to your Schofield note in about, I think it's page uh, 10, 1003. And he talks about the five differences. And uh, now the kingdom of God was supposed to be the same as the kingdom of heaven in the sense that they were supposed to be united as one. The kingdom of God, heaven, the kingdom of God was going to come down the kingdom of, of heaven, which will in the millennium. In the kingdom, in the millennium, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven will unite. It'll be a spiritual kingdom. We're going to see resurrected saints. We'll be resurrected saints walking around in the millennium. Angels will be around in the millennium. Interacting with the earth. Interacting with the people on earth. Tribulational martyrs will be your ruler. Uh, with church age believers who have suffered with Christ. 
That'd be part of the rule shit. People are gonna get blamed. That's gonna happen. See, the spiritual is gonna unite, is gonna be intermingle with the physical. That's not happening now. But so when you see parables in there with the kingdom of God being mentioned in the in Luke and Mark, and you say, well, they're they almost the same parables in the kingdom in the kingdom of heaven, yeah. But as Scofield points out, there's omissions because they're supposed to be they were supposed to be very comp comparable. They're supposed to uh, uh, interact together. But the, the omissions in the uh, a couple of parables aren't mentioned in Mark and Luke. The uh, wheat and tares. There are no tares in the kingdom of God. Can't be. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. The unbelievers can't get in there. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the fishing of the net. No bad fish in the kingdom of God. Only safe. Only safe people get in the kingdom of God. So the omissions are what really show that. There's a, there's a the only you have to be born again to get in the kingdom of God, and the the when the in the millennium they have believers and believers together wheat and tares, and the tares are going to be exposed at the end at the, the revolution at the end, but they're they're going to be coexisting together. So all the Anderson people are going to be some screaming. They, all the people want to reject the idea of the difference between kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, but there are there are differences. The kingdom of heaven is a physical kingdom that was not taken away from the Jew. That's the millennium kingdom that's going to be set up. That was the last thing the apostles asked the Jews. I asked uh, Jesus when he left, when is the kingdom going to be set up? That, that was about the, the kingdom of heaven. Not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God already exists. The kingdom of God already exists. There's no kingdom to be set up with the kingdom of God. They're asking about when is he going to come establish the kingdom of heaven. Uh, so that kingdom, that's what the kingdom they were talking about. As, him as king of kings and lord of lords. But all the things, uh, Ezekiel 40, 48, the new, the new temple is going to be built. Jesus Christ is going to be ruling from that temple. There's going to be nations that have, all, every nation has to come and worship at that temple, pay homage to the king on, on the threat of, uh, of plagues and uh, things and famines and things. And um, uh, Jews, he's going to make a point at the end. He says, well, the Jews are going to rule the world. The Jews will rule the world in that sense that they'll have a king who's in charge of the world. Yeah, that's right. And they had that, the, the passage where people grab onto a, a Jew and say, take us to Jerusalem. Because, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that's where the king is. And they'll, they'll grab onto a Jew. So I'll stop and put that, put this up. Replacement theology is, is a half truth, which is, you've got a balance of the fact that God is not done with Jew. 11, Romans 11 talks about that. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. In part, has, Israel is not the church. Until something finishes. That's why we can't have a day of rapture, by the way. Who's idiots are looking for a day of rapture? The, the only next event that has to happen is the completion of the body of Christ. And as soon as that body is complete, it has to go. As soon as the, the body is completed, the church has to be taken up. Because you can't have more saved people. So uh, they can't be out of the body. I mean, that's you know, that's it. Once they're, they're being saved, they're put in the union of Christ. They're put in their body, and that's it. They're, it has to go up. So that's why you can't predict the date. You can look around on not doomsday. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, you can't look predict the date because no one knows, who, you know, when that last person is going to be saved, and then the body is complete and the body is taken up. But well, you know, and so he says the enemies for for for, for uh, the enemies of the gospel for your sakes, and yet they're. Uh, for the sake, for, for, for the sake of the elect, they're, they're beloved. They're beloved for the Father's sake. They're beloved for the Father's sake. Oh, they've been separated from wrath and wiped out. And, uh, yeah. And yet God, for the Father's sake, still loves them. And they can't handle that. You go to any of these passages, I haven't gone to here yet, and those guys, when they get that passage, you know what they do? They make it universal. Oh, he loves everybody. God loves everybody. I know some of the Jew there. But then God's wrath. Paul says that. Paul says he killed the Messiah. But God says, I'm taking care of that problem. I'm taking care of that issue. He tells Gentiles, you keep your hands off them. They're my problem, not yours. So a lot of people, you know, attack the Jew. You know, so Anderson's going, yeah, see, we, you know, we, they did this to the Messiah, and they rejected the Messiah, and they killed the Messiah, and they... He killed their prophets, they killed the Messiah. Yeah, and Paul said they, put, they, they, they were the per, beginning of the first century, the persecutors of the church. But they became, uh, you know, then the Romans took over. And because uh, they, you know, they began attacking the Jew as well as Christians. But I tell you, that's where you have to listen to these guys. And uh, so don't be deceived. 
Jews have a future. God is not done with the Jews. That's the whole idea. God is done with the Jews. No, he's not done with the Jews. All the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled yet. Many, many prophecies yet. They're gonna, and they, they had to be put back in the land. As soon as they got back in the land, well, they talk. They were separated. You know, he says, cut down that, that tree was gone. In 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 uh, what was London called? They compared to the olive tree, not the fig tree. So let me stop. Put this up. Amen. Thank you.